Uh, you talk about um, cross-team collaboration. Uh, you've recently written about it and you said that code ownership can become part of the problem when trying to coordinate across multiple teams. Um, what, what problems are, arise from this? It comes down to this same kind of thing of like, how do we keep teams operating independently and not kind of stepping on each other's toes? Um, and the only way that I've really seen that work is to, to draw pretty clear boundaries around who owns what uh, area of the code there's some kind of techniques you can use to try and um, make those boundaries a little more kind of um, diffuse so kind of like inner source or like internal open source kind of ideas but i think fundamentally um, you need like if you want your code to remain healthy in the long term and not kind of turn into a mess in the long term the only way to achieve that is with a clear kind of ownership um, of of areas of the code. So you, you kind of you need people to own areas of the code. But then the, the challenge becomes for any um, interesting uh, piece of work, for anything that's kind of like really going to deliver a business impact, you're almost always going to be cutting across multiple teams code bases, right? Yes. Like. And, and it, unless you're a teeny tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny startup where you, you like a single team literally owns the entire kind of value stream from front end all the way down to the database and all the rest of it. Um, anytime that you're bigger than that, you end up for anything that is really impactful from a business perspective, it's generally going to cut across multiple areas of the business, um, which means it's going to necess almost necessarily cut across multiple, multiple teams. So then the challenge becomes how do we coordinate these different teams work um, in, in an efficient way because the the biggest costs that you've got with uh, or the biggest inefficiencies that you can kind of run into are around kind of cross-team collaboration right that's the, the reason why we uh we break teams up into smaller teams is because communicating be between a bunch of people is hard so now communicating inside of that smaller team is easier but um communicating across those team boundaries is hard so um so so what i've what i've seen a lot of organizations struggle with is not really having any kind of plan for or any intentional plan for how do we make a change happen across multiple code bases um some some places just literally they they, they don't have a way of doing it they just mm they they do like a like shoulder tapping or um or they just say like i don't know i guess this team should just go into this other team's code base and make the change and submit a pull request um well you, you've identified say, some of these patterns haven't you yeah. where these code ownership patterns from single owner to orphan to modular mon monolith can, can you run us through some of these these ownership patterns yeah, so so the the one that I've kind of just said I, I believe is kind of like the right way of doing it is is kind of this idea of single ownership. So um, having having clear own ownership boundaries that's a lot easier with um, that's a lot easier with kind of more uh, microservice architectures because um, you can you can you have clear boundaries around um, each service and you can say a given service is owned by a given team. It's quite easy. To do that, it's quite nice and one to one. If you've got a uh, larger monolithic system, um, like m my definition of a monolith is a single deployable thing which is owned by multiple teams, where the code is owned by multiple different teams. Yeah. Um, and so, if you're working in in that situation, you can either have um, undefined or unclear or messy ownership, um, which is it, it kind of comes with a whole bunch of challenges, kind of as, as I was just alluding to um or you can draw clear boundaries make an effort to draw clear boundaries inside of that monolith as to which teams own which code yeah. um and then the last thing which like you know the the there's um i think part of the reason a lot of organizations have been kind of moving towards microservices apart from it just being trendy and buzzwordy is um that kind of clear code ownership but what what can happen, um, well, I guess it can also happen with monoliths, but I see it being more painful with microservices is sometimes just someone builds something and then they 
don't own it anymore or they don't want to own it anymore. So um, particularly when you've got organizations that have really enabled, really made it easy to spin up a new service, you get these situations where a given team operates like 10, 15, 20 services. And then at some point, the person that created the service kind of goes to a different team or goes to a different company or, you know, wins the lottery or whatever. And now you've got these services which are running in production and no one knows um, who owns them. And if you need to make changes to them, either because you want to make an improvement or because something's going wrong with them, um, you kind of have this challenge of, of not knowing who owns who owns what. So there's these kind of orphan code bases. And that happens a lot. That's that's reality. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, to be honest, it happens with. It's not like it doesn't happen with monolithic systems, um, but in in general, because monolithic systems have these kind of more diffuse ownership patterns, people are more comfortable with making changes to like a, a part of the code base that they don't own. Like they're not going to want to make those changes, but if, if push comes to shove, someone's going to be like, uh you know, I've got to get this thing to work. Okay, I guess I'll do it. But if it's like a different repo, you know, like a different repo that you don't even know how to stand the thing up locally to kind of like to start developing it, um, it's harder to kind of deal with that, um, those kind of orphan, um, abandoned code kind of situations. Mm-hmm.